Good evening, comrades, and welcome to the first Sunday edition of the Bone Daily. Thank you uh, for all your good wishes for those who sent them, uh, suggestions for technical improvements. At the moment, I'm filming on a webcam on the computer. Um, we should be having a video camera one end of the week, should improve the sound quality and stuff like that. Thanks for those who suggested getting rid of all the clutter in the background. That went down like a fucking lead balloon, I can tell you. We have, however, as you can see, dealt with the issue of product placement. And uh, me old mate here, he's a good soldier strike. So he's going to be staying put for some considerable fucking time. Right. The state of anarchism in the UK. And what a fucking state. Uh, and all my time as an anarchist, going back nearly 50 years. I can't recall the time when the anarchist movement is so pitiable, so ineffective, uh, so incoherent. It doesn't exist at all really as a movement. A series of disparate individuals and groups around the country are anarchist groups, individuals and so on. But to say they had any of the, the, the attributes of a movement uh, is very far from the truth. So, comrades, as the great man said, what is to be done? Of course, the answer to that is if I fucking knew it, I'd have fucking done it. We'll be wasting the last 50 fucking years fucking about. So I'm going to try and look at it in a new way uh, over the next few days. Uh, first of all, look at it in a way of, of geography. How has uh, how has geography uh, uh, affected the uh, the state of the anarchist movement? There's two fundamental things to think of here. First is that the movement in London, and anarchists in London, are totally different from anarchists in the rest of the UK, especially anarchists in the big cities, and especially the big cities up north. Anarchism in London tends to be a transient population with little roots in the area. Most of the people who are anarchists in London don't live, work or socialise in the areas they were born in. A lot of the stuff in London, people who come from outside London, like myself for example, from all over Europe, there's lots of foreign European anarchists in London, um, and they tend to be attracted. There's enough anarchists in London to have a sort of anarchist social scene, so they naturally tend to seek out other anarchists. Historically this has meant that anarchism in London is mainly rooted in Hackney and Lambeth and more lately in Tower Hamlets and Camden but that's about a lot. Uh, West London none, South London none, far out East London not much nor in North London. So anarchists are treated in, in basically what is social scenes in, in, in those areas. Uh, this means that there also tends to be a very lifestyle thing with you know identities of music and, uh, and squats and personal relationships to the fore also means that sort of personal disputes become greatly enlarged uh, into disputes which people must take sides on because they know both individuals involved and so on and so on and so on. Um, so outside London I think you can say it's totally different. Uh, anarchists who live in the same area all their lives tend to know people they went to school with, people they work with, you know, grannies and granddads. They're much, better, they're much more rooted in the society. Uh, they live in. They also know, I think this is key, that they, in London there's enough anarchists for anarchists just to seek each other out, to find enough anarchists to disagree with, fall out with, spins a group with. In areas outside London, most anarchists will work with other people on the left. They, you know, they don't see anarchists like we do in London as filthy, crunched out Spanish Civil War Trotskyists and Stalinists. They see them as uh, some bloke they went to school with. Uh, or some, some bloke they used to work with and so on. So anarchists outside London tend to work uh, with, with, with people on the left much more so. Um, the, the, the socialist clubs up north, like the, the Bolton Socialist Club, anarchists could be seen going there. In the northeast there's anarchists working in, in trades councils. So anarchists outside London are much more rooted in working with the left and don't really see um, the, the lefties they work with as sort of Kronstadt avenging scum. Um, my own experience would be that when I was living in Swansea for 18 years, I mean, I'd know practically everyone in the fucking city. Uh, I knew who was the hardest man in the city, who the criminals were, who the shoplifters were, who were the people who worked on the trades council and so on. Um, and they were generally decent people, you know, and the lefties used to work with in, in Swansea, they were decent people, as, as people in the Socialist Party of Great Britain, even in the, the Maoist, the Workers' Revolutionary Party, so, all decent, all on the same side, working together. There's a whole raft of people who aren't lefties in the terms of belonging to Trotskyist groups, but are what you might call old labour, in that they, uh, their heroes are people like Tony Benn, Dennis Skinner, people like that. 
Uh, at the moment, that whole lot of people feel themselves disenfranchised, really. Um, they don't identify with New Labour, they're not going to join any of the trot groups, and so they, they, they effectively have got nowhere to go to. For me, it's this constituency we need to be working with. We need to tie in with, uh, we need to tie in with a lot of people who, who old Labour has let down and are searching for a home. There's a huge gap on the left at the moment because none of the trot organisations amount to, to fuck all. Um, if you go to places like Tall Puddle, for example, you'll find about 20,000 old Labour people there, very receptive to, to you know, the messages of, of, of class struggle, class war, and so on. And they were genuine, good, decent people, good, honest, working class people, who, who Anik is, at the moment, has no attraction for at all. Um, and until we find a way of trying to connect with those people, we remain totally, totally get odds. But when we do work with them, we find we've got a lot in common. Now, they're not going to buy into anarchist history. It's not, we're not like a religious brand, so the Jehovah's Witness knocks on the door, the anarchist knocks on the door and tries to sell you the bearded men of Bakun in Malatesta and so on. But in, in reality, on particular struggles, we have a lot in common with these people, and they are fucking working class. You know, they're of our class, they're our people. So we need to look at ways of detaching these people from old labour. There, there is a huge fucking gap in the market at the moment, on the left. None of the lefties have got any sort of uh, uh, relevance at all. The recent, you know, implosion of, uh, of respect with uh, Kate Hudson resigning, Salma Yacoub, who personally I've had a lot of time for, I've met her once, um, and she's a very genuine person. If we could find a sort of some common cause with people like Salma, people like Andrew Bergen, then maybe we could look to develop a, a, a radical organisation which encompass not just anarchists but other people on the left that could actually get on with and work with each other. Okay, that's the first thought on geography. I'll be having further thoughts tomorrow, as no doubt you expected, comrades. Good night. Over and...